today. Uh, I want to welcome you to the Hungry Hearts final service on Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets. We've had a great time. We started out with Arab Shabbat last night, and we uh, brought our year to Yeshua for judgment, and we asked and pleaded for his mercy. We also uh, made what the Jews call Tashlik, that is to say we burned our sin list and asked for forgiveness. This morning we, we had a Zikra note which commemorated our wedding to Yeshua Messiah, maybe in advance, maybe not, depends how you look at it. And so we've been having a fantastic holy day here today, and now uh, we're going to talk about a very serious prophetic topic. Uh, you know, some of those speakers will tell you, you get your message title sometimes way in advance. And so <clears throat> we came out of Pentecost and I sat down with the Lord and I asked for the message titles over the weeks that through the summer and this week's was the time is now I didn't think much about it a couple of days later I got a phone call from my soon-to-be uh, sister-in-law and she said hey we're getting married uh, we want y'all to come so that kind of jumbled up the weeks in there but nonetheless I've known since early June this was the title for today well the, the, the time is now is not like a happy title, right? That's not like, oh, yippee. So last night, Lenise is like, you have something positive for tomorrow, right? And I'm like, don't know. So I'm going to start out with a, a brief discussion about Herbert W. Armstrong. I got saved in the Worldwide Church of God at the end of 1985 by reading books Put out by Herbert W. Armstrong. Lenise saw him on TV. I was already somewhat keeping Sabbath. I say keeping. You know how it is when you first learn about Sabbath, you're more acknowledging it than you are keeping it because you don't know what you're doing. But but you're making an attempt out of nothing. So she said, you got to come in and watch this guy. <clears throat> this was on a Sunday morning. <clears throat> and I said, I can't. I did Sabbath yesterday. Now I have to work in the yard. You know how it is with guys, yard work, you cut the grass weeds. So she eventually prevailed on me after a couple of weeks to watch Mr. Armstrong, and he was talking about the mark of the beast and the meaning of the Sabbath in the book of Revelation. Well, I'm, I'm a watcher now from now on, and I began to order books. It's in the summer of 85. And when I read the book, The U.S. and Britain and Bible Prophecy, that put me on my knees asking Jesus to forgive me for my sins because I realized I'm part of the problem, right? I grew up in the 70s kind of a wild generation to grow up as a teenager amen and I realized I'm, I'm I'm part of the problem and I don't want to be part of the problem and at the end of the book Mr. Armstrong tells you that you don't have to be a part of the problem and you don't have to get the suffering so I took a little heat over him last month Mr. Armstrong was an apostle of God who restored much of what we take for granted in the Sabbath world. In other words, you come into the Sabbath world and we're not Trinitarians. Well, that wasn't true before Mr. Armstrong. And we understand that the United States is Israel and Bible prophecy. That wasn't true before Mr. Armstrong. And we understand that we're to be children of God. That wasn't true before Mr. Armstrong. And I could go on and on and on with many, many truths that Mr. Armstrong restored to the church, or better put, Jesus restored to the church through Mr. Armstrong. So Herbert Armstrong was God's chosen servant to work for a time, and his deeds were mighty. Now, you know, you've heard me talk about it, and I didn't have time to look the pictures up. I, I, I think I pitched the disc. But I brought them, I brought them to Passover in 2015 because so many people, you know, look at me wild-eyed. And we posted the pictures of the feast in uh, 1994 in Daytona Beach, Florida. Now, a lot of y'all have a hard time understanding this, but we had almost 300 in the choir at the Feast of Tabernacles. We can't even get 300 in a room anymore, but we had 300 in the choir. How do I know that? Because our best friends were in the choir. We had more children in the children's choir than 300. How do I know that? Because I had two kids in the children's choir in 94. That was just at Daytona Beach. St. Petersburg was a bigger feast site. So we had 6,500 people in 1994 at the Feast of Tabernacles, but they had 8,500 in St. Petersburg. 
And they had another 3,500 in Pensacola. And they had 800 in Miami that took the feast on a cruise ship. That's just Florida. We had 26 sites around the world. I know that's mind-blowing now, right? 146,000 people kept the Feast of Tabernacles with the Worldwide Church of God only, not counting any splits in 1994. So we take all that stuff for granted. Now we're the recipients of all the stuff. So I, I, I never will disavow Mr. Armstrong because most of what we got came through his work. Just like I won't disavow Perry Stone because it was through his hands that God opened up the baptism of the Holy Spirit in me. Oh, but you said everything they taught you was wrong. Well, most of it was. I mean, I can't help it. It's not my fault. I mean, look, someone brought up the Jewish wedding. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Bill Cloud's the one that taught Perry Stone about the ancient Jewish wedding. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Bill Cloud. Yeah, the Sabbath keeper. Yeah, that's right. So anyway, Mr. Armstrong was a forerunner, a groundbreaker, a man who listened to Yeshua and obeyed him. Now, Mr. Armstrong went around the world, <clears throat> excuse me, and he taught, would you have me my water, honey? He went around to world leaders all over this country, and he told them what's going to happen to this world if we continue, thank you, honey, if we continue to refuse God by breaking his commandments. He went all over the world. I, I, he didn't go to every single country, but he went to most of them, including countries in Africa, including countries in Europe, including the president, several presidents of the United States. Mr. Armstrong had a calling of God to warn the world of what's coming if we don't return to the Torah. He didn't call it that. He called it God's laws and commandments. But he meant the ones in, in the Torah. Amen? It wasn't popular to call it Torah then because you got to remember, in the 60s and 70s and 80s, there wasn't a Messianic movement. The Messianic movement did not explode until the collapse of the Worldwide Church of God in 1995. When Joseph Dukach took them away from Sabbath and Holy Days, the church collapsed and scores of refugees flooded the messianic communities and actually made them a messianic community a lot of folks don't know that <clears throat> how do i know that because the late um brad scott told me that so my calling is not to warn the nation but to warn the church specifically the sabbath church we're not living up to our calling i say us i don't mean hungry hearts i mean the general sabbath church is not living up to its calling and because we're not, we're giving Yeshua a bad name. I believe we had discussed that in fellowship this morning about Sabbath keepers who give Sabbath keeping a bad name. And I want to start with Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 12. Isaiah 1 and verse 12. When you come to appear me, appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. Your new moon Sabbaths and convocations I cannot bear. Your evil assemblies. Your new moon festivals and your appointed feasts my soul hates. They have become a burden to me and I'm weary of bearing them. All right, well, this used to be the core of our advertising for the Feast of Tabernacles back in the early part of Hungry Hearts. Y'all don't know that. But in 04, 05, 06, this is what I'm mailing to people all over the country. Not exactly how to win friends and influence people. But you see, with the breakup of the Worldwide Church of God and the second split in the United Church of God, right? So we, we started from Worldwide to United because we, you know, we just thought we'd just keep it together. And then the first split was when David Hume left. David Hume was the president, and he split and left and took a bunch of people out. And then we had a second split because churches like Jackson and Tupelo were kicked out because we weren't conforming well enough. You know, we had some local flavor. In other words, you couldn't be Jackson and Jackson. You had to be exactly the way they told you, corporate stuff, right? 
And so they ran all of us swashbucklers out, I call us that, those pirates, that started up these churches, these renegades. We started up all these renegade churches. They were happy to take us in in the beginning because they had nothing. But then after we wouldn't conform to every single thing, I mean, we conformed to doctrine. It wasn't like we were, you know, bowing up and telling, you know, we disagree with what you teach or anything. It's we wanted to have chairs and snacks in Jackson and Jackson and decorate a little bit, right? Oh, that's taboo. So anyway, after the second split in United, there was a reform movement among our kind of churches to let's get back to Jesus. Let's put the focus on him. You see, prior to that, the feast had been based around vacation. Oh, you went to church every day. You went to church twice on the holy days. But the rest of the feast was about going to the beach or going to the amusement parks. And you know, look, I'm all for spending your time and having a good time. But can't Yeshua be the primary focus? And then our having a good time happen around that? Well, that's how Hungry Hearts got started. Literally, that's how it got started in 03. We were built about putting worship, worshiping Yeshua first and foremost without diminishing sound teaching. So we didn't diminish the teaching. See, a lot of folks wanted to get, get rid of the teaching. Let's just worship all day. Well, okay, I can do that. I love doing that, but they, but they didn't want the teaching. And there needs to be some good sound teaching, amen? So that was a novel concept back in 03 and 04 and 05. Nobody was doing that but us. We kind of pioneered. You've heard me talk about pioneering many times. In, in what's left of Mr. Armstrong's work, we're pioneers. We went first. Now, we didn't go first on getting the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but the ones who did go first were not bigger churches like Hungry Hearts. They were, they were little home fellowships, right? So, and, and, you know, you'd find a few women, they'd get to pray, and they'd find out about tongues. Maybe one of them would get tongues. They'd pray with each other until they all got tongues. They were worldwide refugees, but then they were, once they started praying in tongues, they weren't accepted anywhere else. We were the first one to have a service in a building you know, consistent service in a building that actually took this on. And uh, that made people not want to talk to us anymore, right? So we went first. Now you find a lot of the churches of God have worship. Church of God International, the one that Sandy came out of, now it has worship. They do like 30 minutes, I think, is what Kelly told me the last time he went. So what we started was a novel concept, and now a lot of them follow it. Now, time has gone on. This is 20 years later. And Yeshua has seemed to have delayed his coming, and people are wanting to take their focus off of worshiping him first and turning more to other pursuits. But I'm going to ask you a question. I don't know how much y'all watch the news. I, I, I watch it a fair amount. In 2023, is this time to focus on worshiping less? I don't know, man. We were watching a bunch of prophetic stuff, right? So, you know, when you get turn the TV off and you get on Roku and you do a little research on prophetic topics on Roku, I mean, a lot, I, I realize a lot of it's not YouTube. I'm sorry. A lot, of it's, a lot of it's nonsense. Okay, I'll grant you that. I mean, a lot of them you can tell about five minutes in. Ah, we can go get another one. But all of it's not nonsense, and some of it's pretty scary. I'm going to talk to you at the end of the message about a couple things I saw that are pretty scary this week. Does this turning away from true love for Yeshua signal that the time is now? You see, I was there for the great falling away in 95. People say, oh, there's a great falling away company. I got news for everybody. The great falling away was in 95. We're a long way from there now. I was there live, front and center. But what's going on in the Sabbath churches right now is similar, okay? So I talked to a lot of people, maybe not quite as many as Kelly Mack, but I talked to a lot of folks. And a lot of them are experiencing the same things in their churches that we're experiencing here. Matter of fact, we went through our recent time of trouble. I got a call from a pastor out of town, out of state, and he called me for advice on the very thing we had just gone through. He's, he's going through it right now, and he called me and said, hey, what do I do? This and this and this is going on. I said, well, you won't believe this, but that same thing just happened here. No. Yeah. So it's not alone. He's, he's like three different people I know of who this type of stuff is happening right now in 2023. So does that signal that time is moving on 
that maybe the time is now. We're going to start in Leviticus because in Leviticus you have the definitive prophecies for what's going to happen to these United States because we have rejected God's law. We have had an apostle, that is one who was sent by Yeshua Messiah to tell the leaders of this country, this is what's going to happen if you don't keep God's laws and commandments. So, you know, I, I love uh, Rabbi Khan. What's his first name? Jonathan Khan. But when he was saying all those things uh, to Donald Trump, he wasn't actually saying them to Donald Trump. He was saying them to Donald Trump from a pulpit in another room, not where Donald Trump is. Mr. Armstrong said his stuff in the White House, in the Oval Office, to the President of the United States. Little different, little difference there, right? It's one thing to be a voice crying out in the wilderness like my brother Rabbi Khan. It's another to be standing in the Oval Office, Mr. President. This and this is going to happen if you don't, you follow what I'm saying. A lot of y'all don't know that because you didn't come in in that time period, but I was there. So was Miss Lanise. Now, in verse 14, he says, if you will not listen to me and carry out these commands, that's, that's the Torah. That's these commands. These commands right here. If you're not going to do this, if you reject my decrees, abhor my laws, and fail to carry out my commands, and so violate my covenant, then I will do this to you. Right? Huh? Uh, Leviticus 26. I, I think we're there. Wouldn't you say that we're there? We failed to carry out the commandments. Mr. Armstrong warned in the 1960s and the 1970s and the 1980s. This is 2023. This is 2023. So look, this is what's coming. I'm going to bring on you sudden terror, wasting diseases, and fever that will destroy your sight and drain away your life. We got some people work medical. That's, that's what's going on in the hospital night right now, right? You will plant your seed in vain because your enemies will eat it. I will set my face against you so that you will be defeated by your enemies, and those who hate you will rule over you, and you will flee even when no one is pursuing you. Mr. Armstrong warned this nation for years to turn away from our sins and come back to our Israelite roots. Back in the 60s, we started having terror attacks, hijackings, and bombings. Okay? Very few of us are old enough to remember hijackings in the 1960s, terror attacks and bombings, but they started in the 1960s. In 2023, we forget many of these things that happened. Cancer has exploded to become one of the leading causes of death. It is a wasting disease. Tuberculosis, whoops, that's gone. Tuberculosis has come back. With a vengeance, we thought we'd gotten rid of it, but it's coming back, except it's antibiotic-resistant tuberculosis, and, uh, and it's a problem. I can remember when Nixon sold wheat to the Russians in the 1970s and caused the price of bread to go to a dollar a loaf. And people are right now in 2023 are going, a dollar a loaf? What we wouldn't give for a dollar a loaf. Thank you, sir. But when Nixon did that, Bread was 25 cents a loaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, well, we will see. Things that happen. We fled Vietnam in 1975. And, and people said America has won its last war. As a matter of fact, I saw an interview one time with Colin Powell, and he was part in the military during the Vietnam War, and he was part of rebuilding the military, not just weapons and munitions, but also the morale, because after the defeat in Vietnam, everybody was demoralized in the U.S. military for a long time. You know, the reason we lost Vietnam is because the Democrats cut their ammunition off. Yeah. Yeah, the Democrats voted in Congress to quit loaning them the money so they could buy bullets. And since they couldn't buy bullets, that's why the Viet Vietnamese overran them. They, they, they were in control when we left. If they had honored their treaty covenants to supply them with munitions, they would not have fallen to the communists. That was done by design. Those same people are in office right now doing the same things by design 
to destroy what's left of this formerly great country. Now, in verse 18, he continues, If after all this you will not listen to me, I will punish you for your sins seven times over, and I will break down your stubborn pride and make the sky above you like iron and the ground beneath you like bronze. Your strength will be spent in vain because your soil <coughs> will not yield its crops, nor will the trees of the land yield their fruit. Okay, from the 1980s on, we've had a series of awful droughts where literally our sky was like iron and our ground was like brass. You know, the similar passage in Deuteronomy says, I will rain down on you powder and dust until you are destroyed. Well, that's going on in large parts of the West. And in addition to that, in California, they stopped saving the snow melt in reservoirs and flushing it all out to sea, and then they're not irrigating the crops. Well, I don't know if y'all realize this, but there was a time when we got 80% of our fresh produce from California, and that region of the country produces virtually nothing now. In addition, with the high cost of land and the crazy regulations, a lot of the growers of food, the big farmers, I don't mean corporate farmers, but I mean big farmers, they're moving their operations to Mexico because they can't afford to farm here. And they won't give them the visas to bring the farm workers. Now, when I was a kid, we moved to Florida. I was only 16. But they had migrant camps all over Florida. And they would move from crop to crop to crop. So in one place, they'd be there in January picking the oranges. In another, they would pick the ferns. And then they would go to pick the corn. And they would, whatever the crop was, these people, large amounts of foreigners who came in on visas would migrate around the state picking the crops they're not allowed to do that now they won't let them in see the whole thing has been made absurd over the border because they want to fight over it instead of fixing it we do need agricultural workers we need the border closed but we need agricultural workers with visas to come in look it was that wasn't that, that many years ago uh, I think we were in University Parkway, and I read an article in the Wall Street Journal where the farmers in Arizona didn't have anybody to pick the lettuce, and they lost the entire lettuce crop. No one to pick it. it. Takes actual people. You know, machines can't do that. It's delicate. You got actual people. Yeah. I don't know if y'all been watching this. But the four corner states, you know what the four corner states are, right? Colorado and I don't remember all of them, but Arizona, New Mexico, what's the other one? Huh? Utah. Okay, <clears throat> the four corner region, the Colorado River runs through there, and it's running dry. And they just settled a lawsuit over the distribution of water. And there's hardly any water that goes all the way down to the – Baja Gulf of California to actually go to the sea because they use it all. And then there's a bunch of real estate developers going in to make new housing developments and they wanted all the water. And so the four states are fighting over who gets the water and what can you use it for. Drought out west. We take water for granted because we live in Tennessee. Leviticus 21. If you remain hostile to me, and refuse to listen to me, I will multiply your affliction seven times over as your sins deserve. I will send wild animals against you. And they will rob you of your children, destroy your cattle, and make you so few in number that your roads will be deserted. If in spite of these things you do not accept my correction but continue to be hostile towards me, I myself will be hostile towards you. So who are these wild animals? In the Hebrew, it is Sadeh, S-A-D-E-H, Kaya. Sadeh is translated area of land, field, open country, land. And in this case, it's translated wild. Huh. In Daniel 7, the four great beasts are Rav Kiva. Were the Rav Kiva in the open country in Leviticus 26? And were they in the sea at the time Daniel was seeing the vision? I don't mean the time Daniel's living in I mean the time he's seeing the vision because you see when Daniel's seeing the vision it's at the et kets or last boundary so were they in the open field at one time because that's what Sadeh really means is open field because Kaya and Kiva are equivalents 
Kiva is the Aramaic equivalent of the Hebrew Kaya and vice versa. Both of these names can mean zoo animals or they can mean the mythological creatures of chaos that so inflamed the ancient mind. Huh. Is that what's next? Is he going to turn the Rav Kiva loose in the United States? Now, <clears throat> we did a great study on this. and You can write us for our, uh, or send us $12 for uh, what comes next in the workbook, and we'll tell you all the information you need on these Rav Kiva or these uh, great beasts. But they're false religion, mass killing, starvation because of authority, and plague, and all cause mortality. Right now we have the beginnings of these things, amen? I mean, every day you see a young athlete, it was one this week, 34 years old, bodybuilder, drop dead, no apparent cause. All cause mortality in the young, well athletic, you know, well fit people is, is increasing. I mean, it's, it's nearly every day when I go on to the internet, the news feed talks about some celebrity athlete dropping dead. Why? Why do we have this massive increase in all-cause mortality? Well, it's made Tucker Carlson, but there were a number of studies that showed that the spike protein from COVID does that, whether you get it from the disease or you get it from the shot. All-cause morbidity, morbid, sorry, mortality, all-cause mortality. <clears throat> Now, this made Tucker Carlson. So I bothered to look the studies up, right? He said he quoted three studies. I bothered to look them up. He had them on his website. He said, look them up. They're there. They're there. They're there. Woke is a religion. Woke is a religion. So is this the false religion that's going to turn people away? You know, it comes out in a, on a white horse saying, oh, yes, you got to be nice to everybody. Well, okay, all right, I grant you that. But nice doesn't come with things like penance. Nice doesn't come with forced conversions. Right now, they're requiring penance. And that is the whole thing behind this anti-energy agenda in the United States. We have to do penance for destroying the planet, even though there's no real evidence that that's the case. Matter of fact, if you look at the United States, this is the, one of the cleanest places on Earth, and we're the most industrialized our energy use is the most efficient and the cleanest in, on the planet of anywhere. So why do we got to do penance? They literally want to make you go. I mean, just look this up. I mean, this has all been news on Fox over the last six months. They want to take away your stove, your refrigerator. They want to take away your air conditioning. Now they're coming for your heating in the wintertime. They're trying to shut off natural gas in the country from which we make fertilizer. And they want to shut off diesel. They're trying to make electric tractors. Well, I don't know if you know anything about farming, but when you got to get the crop in, time is of the essence. And when you got to get the crop out, time is of the essence, especially for food. Now, after all, they don't care. But when it's, you're talking about food crops, they got to get it out before it spoils. Well, they oftentimes work like 24 hours a day getting this stuff in and getting it out. How do I know that? I live on the edge of town. There's a bunch of farmer's fields out there. They've been, they've been cutting the corn now for days. They're, they're running nonstop trying to get all this in. But if you don't have diesel fuel and you have to rely on an electric tractor that runs four hours and takes another 15 to charge, you can't do that. You can't get it in. You can't get it out. You see where we're going with this. That's where they're going with it. In public schools, they openly admit on TV they're coming for our children. They say it. They say it out loud. Fox has shown at least four different school board meetings where someone stood up and said, hey, we're coming for your kids. And I'm thinking, in the 70s, you'd have never made it to the car. In the 1970s, you sit at the school board meeting, you'd have never made it to the car, and the police would have helped you. Right? I mean, there wasn't any of this politically correct police just going to stand by and watch everybody go crazy. Because that's not how we grew up. And all this, the Sabbath community, has conspiracies have become more important than church. It's all about the conspiracies now. We have murder and mayhem on the increase in our cities every day. Every day, Fox has a video of somebody coming up, 
got, got the ring camera on the door, somebody coming up and robbing somebody, beating them down in front of their house, grabbing some lady's purse, dragging her across the street. Sometimes they, they jump in the car and throw her out, and she's hanging on trying to get her, drag her down to her death down the street, Go, going in the subway, pushing somebody in front of the train. I see this every day on Fox News, a new video of this. I don't even watch that much news anymore, but it's every day there's a new video of some crazy thing going on in this country. No wonder we opened the jails during COVID and we never rounded the recidivists back up. Remember all that? Oh, yeah, they're going to get COVID and die. I'm like, well, what about when they start killing us? Now they're killing us and nobody cares. They know who these people are. In New York City, they've got guys that they arrest four and five times a day. They release them. No, nobody's going to prosecute them. They, they, they never prosecute crimes in New York City. Any wonder why it's going crazy? If you don't lock these people up, look, these people are bad. They're not going to change. And now that we've incentivized them, our, now the new one is this. This happened, what, last night or Thursday? They changed the laws in New York. You cannot prosecute a crime committed by somebody under 12. So 10-year-olds ten, ten are robbing you at gunpoint because they're not, nothing's going to happen to them at all. They're not even going to jail because you can't prosecute a crime under 12. So 10-year-olds are robbing you at gunpoint. Well, back in the day, you're talking about robbing bars, actually. I'm thinking back in the day you went in to rob a bar, they'd have beat you half to death before you got out of there. Nobody would take that back in the day. But now you'll go to jail for opposing the criminal, and he's walking free. Oh, this is another one. In New York, if you're between 12 and 17, you cannot be tried as an adult. So they know they're going to get a slap on the wrist even if they get caught. And better yet, at 18, their record is expunged. So when you get busted at 19 and you've got a history of 40 priors, nobody can see that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just crazy. The Biden administration two weeks ago took a couple hundred million acres off of out of use for cattle ranchers out west. You just think beef is high. They're trying to shut down natural gas. This is pretty much going to cause a famine in the United States, amen? Now, a few years back, they did this in Sri Lanka. They told Sri Lanka, you need, you need money from us. Therefore, we're going to make you do what we want. So the world all these world organizations that distribute the aid money, they said, you have to go to net zero emissions. So they took out all the chemical fertilizer, because they're telling you now that's the biggest cause of greenhouse gases, chemical fertilizer. They took away all the pesticide. They took away all the diesel fuel. They took away all the fossil fuels. I remember watching on Tucker Carlson an interview with a lady. They, she had a little cooktop on top of a propane tank, you know, the kind that they use on barbecue grills, except instead of having it over here on the side, it's sitting right on top of the tank. I'm like, I don't know, man, cooking on top of the tank. And she said, I have just enough gas in this tank to cook this last meal. And then we're out of gas and we're out of food. The husband drives a taxi. I don't mean a car like you see. You remember the old mail carts? Okay, that's what they drive over there, the old Cushmans, and he, he, that's his taxi, and he, he was in line for three days to get fuel, meaning you didn't leave line. You stayed in line for three days to get fuel to be a taxi driver, and you don't have any food or gas at home. They ran that government out. The, the, the prime minister and senior leadership barely got on the plane alive. They killed a lot of them, but there were so many of them, they stormed the palace anyway, and those people fled for their lives. The country collapsed. They tried to do the same thing to Ghana, and they're trying to do the same thing in the Netherlands. This is famine from authority. Deuteronomy 28. Verse 15, I know this is too hot to talk about, but it's what's going on in our country right now. This is where we are. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. Verse 15, however, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all of his commands and decrees I'm giving you today, all of these curses will come upon you and overtake you. You'll be cursed in the city 
and cursed in the country. So we have the, 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 the videos every day of the murder and mayhem in the city. We got the fentanyl crisis all over the rural areas. Your basket and your kneading trough will be cursed. There's poisons in our food and water, both chemical and biologic. The fruit of your womb will be cursed. Our birth rate right now is the lowest this country has ever been. And you know what? For Israelite countries, it's pretty good because some are much worse. But we're way below, we're way below replacement level. We're way below. It takes 2.3 babies per woman to keep the country at population. That's why so many, the average family in our age was three, because that was just replacement level. We're way below that. The crops of your land, the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your, I'm sorry, the fruit of your womb will be cursed, and the crops of your land, the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks. You'll be cursed when you come in and cursed when you go out. Two years ago, chickens quit laying eggs. And the only place you found that study was on Tucker Carlson tonight. And it turned out it was the feed. The major feed companies had put something in the, in the feed, and it was preventing the chickens from laying eggs. And the only way this one lady figured it out is she ran out of feed, and the feed store was out, and she had to feed them natural food. And when she started feeding the chickens natural food, they started laying eggs again. How about that? Natural food. What a novel concept. Natural food. Wow. What an epiphany. Natural food. But it goes to show you how quickly all of this could be cut down. The whole country seems to have gone crazy. So what's going on? What's going on? Isaiah chapter 1 again. Except this time we're going to read the chapter. Isaiah 1. I hate this for my country. I love my country. But if we don't turn back to God's laws. See, it's easy to blame the politicians and they deserve a lot of our animosity. But the problem is in the Sabbath churches. I hate to say it that way. The problem is in the Sabbath churches. We got to get strong for Jesus. We got to get back in Torah. We got to start keeping the days like we mean it. We got to start getting back that first love because when we can't hold it up, the, our country's finished. Isaiah 1 1. The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. Isn't that what's going on with our youth right now? The ox knows his master, the donkey his owner's manger, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. We have got to go back to the Lord. Ah, sinful nature, sinful nation, a people loaded with guilt, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord, and they have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on him. How have we done that? Because we don't keep his laws and commandments. Today is the Feast of Trumpets. Why is the whole city open for business today? We should be doing nothing today in this city but commemorating the Lord God of Israel. Why should you be beaten anymore? Why do you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured. Your whole heart is afflicted. From the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there's no soundness. So the people at the bottom all the way to the people at the upper top, th the whole body is of the United States is afflicted. There's no soundness, only wounds and welts, open sores, not cleansed or bandaged or soothed with oil. Your country is desolate. Our cities were burned with fire. Didn't that happen in 2020? Didn't we burn our cities with fire in 2020? Your fields are being stripped by foreigners right before you. Laid waste is when overthrown by strangers. The daughter of Zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard, like a hut in a field of melons, like a city under siege. And God's true church is in the middle of this waste, like just exactly that. A shelter in a vineyard, a hut in a field of melons. We, the true church of God, the Sabbath churches, are the refuge from all of the desolation and confusion and anarchy and chaos that's going on out there. When we cease to be that refuge, then there's just no reason for Jesus to continue on with this charade. That's why he's telling me in this message the time is now. If the Sabbath church is going to meld away and be like the rest of our country, there's no more point in it. 
Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. I'm sorry. Verse 9, unless the Lord Almighty had left us some survivors, we would have become like Sodom and we would have been like Gomorrah. So this is what he's calling our leadership of the United States. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me? I have more than enough burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. Your new moon, Sabbaths, and convocations. I can't bear your evil assemblies. He's not talking to the Sunday world here. Sunday people don't keep new moons and Sabbaths and holy days. That's, that's the Sabbath churches. Your new moon festivals, your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I'm going to hide my, my eyes from you. Even if you offer me many prayers, I'm not going to listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my stop. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they're red as crimson, they'll be like wool. If you're willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you're going to be devoured by the, Lord, by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Our children are obsessed with the woke LGBTQ whatever agenda. That's not going to get us back in the good graces of the God of Israel. That's just not going to do it. I mean, I'm, I'm fine for being mannerable, polite to everybody, and we're Americans. Everybody should get their rights that are due them as Americans. But we got to quit teaching this mess in school. Parents are now starting to come to school board readings and meetings and they're reading the books out loud that are given to their children and they're going to jail for obscenity. Well, if it's obscene to read it in the school board meeting, then no business happening in the, kids, the hands of our children. You know, California is now going after school boards that refuse to put those books in the libraries. If California school boards say we're not going to teach that horrible, obscene material to our children, the government is coming after the school board members to put them in jail and fine them. This is absurd. Absurd. Even in the Sabbath church, we said the holy days and the new moons are a burden to us. Now he says they're a burden to him. Amos Chapter 5, he repeats it. Now, a lot of y'all are familiar with some of the new prophetic things that the Lord has given me, and Amos 5 is not a good chapter, amen? Amos 5 is the you're about to have some bad times chapter, and here in the middle of that chapter, he talks about holy days. We'll read the whole passage, Amos 5 and verse 18. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be a day of darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion... That's the first of the Rav Kiva. Only to meet a bear, the second Rav Kiva, as though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall, only to have Nakash, the, the fourth Rav Kiva, bite him. In other words, when I send the four plagues on Israel, there's no way to escape. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, pitch dark without a ray of brightness? Now look at what he says here in verse 21. I hate, I despise your religious feasts. I can't stand your holy days. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let justice roll like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. And he says virtually the same thing in Malachi chapter 1. You know, Malachi, the book right before Jesus shows up, the one that's right before his coming again, right? Right before his first coming, and this is applicable right at his second coming. Malachi 1 and verse 12. I'm sorry, let's go to 11. 
The Lord speaking, my name will be great among the nations from the rising to the setting of the sun. And every place incense and pure offerings will be brought to my name because my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord Almighty. But you profane it. We profane the Lord's name in the Sabbath churches because we say the Lord's temple is defiled and its food is contemptible and we say what a burden and we sniff at it. We're not joyous. I'm not saying hungry hearts because we had a great time today. If you weren't here for that, you missed one of the best holy days of your life because we were very joyous with the bringing of our offerings. But in the Sabbath community at large, we're falling away from the power of what we have. We are not as joyous as we need to be. We're calling holy days a burden. How can it be a burden to come into church and praise God? Really? Really a burden? That's a burden? Really? Really? Now, I'm almost retired now. I'm not in the heat of working massive hours. But you know, I didn't fail to show up when I was. I worked all those years we built the ministry and got it going and did all those things. And y'all will know who set up. I'm there early and y'all know lay do lock up unless it lingers too late at tabs. I, I When I have things to do, I'm there bell to bell. Amen. I don't ever find it contemptible or a burden to come in the house of God and praise him with all I have. You see the days getting evil. If you're not going to praise him in 23, just when do you think you're going to do it? When they take away your building and you're outside? Probably not. It is never so easy to blame politicians, and they deserve a lot of our animosity. But the problems in the true church of Yeshua Messiah, we've lost our first love. We've turned our focus to people. It's all about people. How about putting some focus on God? How about putting some focus on Father and Son, on Elohim? How about moving in the Holy Spirit? Now, if God's people who are called by his name won't do the things required, what hope could there ever be for the country at large? Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56. If you don't have a copy of what comes next, the workbook, uh, I suggest you get it. I don't know that there's a button for that on um, on the web, what's left of our website, but if you will mail me at P.O. Box 10334, Jackson, Tennessee, 38308, 12 bucks with your mailing address, I'll send you one. And you need this. You need this now. Hmm? Yeah. Isaiah 56. Look at verse 9. Come, all you beasts of the field. Come and devour all you beasts of the forest. Are these the Rav Kiva? Are these the Rav Kiva? Are these the four beasts of Daniel 7? There's a lot of places he talks like that. This is God Almighty saying he's going to be the one that gives the order to release. Now, when you go to Daniel 7, in verse 1, it talks about the chaos in the seas. The four winds blow on the great sea. Well, isn't there a place where four angels control the four winds? There's about three places, actually. So, Michael, as the Lord explained to me, commands those four angels. Michael reports to Yeshua. Yeshua only moves when Avi tells him. So when Avi says, there you go, Yeshua's going to give the order to Michael. Michael's going to command the four angels. They're going to open that chaos in the seas, and these, these four beasts are going to come out to devour Israel. I can't tell you how many prophetic passages in Scripture say exactly that. So I look back at our, my former understanding, and I'm like, I don't know, how could I believe that with all the other verses saying the exact different thing, the exact opposite almost? How could I believe what we wrote in the past? Now, look, I do believe there will be a resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire in Europe, but not until the United States is gone. So how do we miss the part about the United States, right? Isn't that the most important thing for those of us who live in the United States? What's going to happen here first? Who cares what happens over there later? It's what happens here now. Now look at verse 1. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice. Do what is right. For Yeshua is close at hand. 
By the way, this is where you get the correct spelling of his name right here. That's where you get the correct spelling of his name. Yeshua, right there. It's close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. You see, Yeshua is, she, is Yud, Sheen, Vav, U, Ein. It has a hay on the end when it's what he does, but it doesn't have a hay when it's him. Interesting study we did back in 2012. So here's the rescue, followed by a verse saying, Blessed is the man who keeps the Sabbath day. Do we call the Sabbath day a burden too? Is the Sabbath is it too hard to come to church on Sabbath? Really? 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 <clears throat> We're living in the last days. What's going to be hard is when you go, your flight takes place on a Sabbath or in the wintertime. That's what's going to be hard about Sabbath. When you're running for your life, coming to church is great. You can pass out in the Holy Ghost during the worship and nobody cares. This is great up in here. Running for your life is not going to be so great. In this chapter, rescue leads off. Worthy comes with a discussion of the importance of the Sabbath, followed by the releasing of the Rob Kiva. And look at verse 10. Israel's watchmen are blind. They all lack knowledge. Tell me you don't see that on Fox News every day. Every show sometimes every day. Followed by an indictment of our leaders. Is our country full of sin to the very brim? You bet it is. What holds back all this bad stuff? The condition of Yeshua's church. When Yeshua's church starts backsliding, and we are, then why wait? The signs in the heavens abound. How much time do I have? Okay, good enough. So, some of y'all remember, I was telling you about the sign in the heavens on trumpets six years ago today. You actually had Virgo with 12 stars over her head. Only time I can find that ever happened. Uh, I had some people who know how to use the Naval Observatory site tell me that they could not find it either, a time where that has occurred in the past. But September 23rd, 2017, you had 12 stars over the head of Virgo. Virgo is the Revelation 12 sign, by the way. When the moon's under her feet, that's Tishri 1. The first crescent is under her feet, that's Tishri 1. It would have been last night. Exactly three and a half years later was Passover. Remember, I said Passover 21, and I said, I don't know what this means, but I'm just telling you, this is 12, this is 42 months from the sign. It's got to be something. I, I, and I cannot, I cannot. Now, the, when the one, the, the film I saw last week showed the icon over that, and the guy referenced that Passover of 2021, but he didn't show what the astronomical sign was. In other words, stuff is going on in Virgo in holy days. A lot of stuff is going on in Virgo in holy days. This week, two days ago, on the 13th, an asteroid named Child moved into Virgo and came out last night before we started the sin list. Came out of the womb, by the way, the birth canal. So an asteroid named Child moves into Virgo on the 13th and is born on the 15th right at sundown, or right before sundown. <laughs> There's a bunch of asteroids in there with the freakiest names possible. One is Ukraine. Another one's the United Nations. They're talking about setting up the abomination that makes desolate. There's at least three different teachers saying that's going to happen between now and the Day of Atonement. I don't know if that's true or not. They never gave any evidence for what they're saying is this abomination that makes desolate. What I'm telling you is that stuff is happening everywhere. Didn't Jesus say at the end there would be signs in the heavens and men would be fearful and waves and roaring of the seas? We got a hurricane off the coast. Except it's going maybe up north where they never get them. And people have been fearful all week at the roaring of the hurricane. It was the worst hurricane season ever. And I'm thinking, I don't know. It uh, seemed to me 05 would take that prize. Not 23. <sighs> 04 was a close runner-up. Not 23. <clears throat> so there are signs in the heavens. There are things going on. 
lots of people are saying this year marks, or today, to not just here, today marks the starting of a new era of time in Bible prophecy. A lot of people are saying that. And then I get a message called, the time is now. And every time I say that or read that, I hear that guy on CHOP going, time starts now. Every time I hear that in my mind, time starts now. I'm not setting dates, and I'm not telling you anything. What I'm telling you is that on this Feast of Trumpets, right now in the heavens, there are signs taking place that are more than coincidental. I cannot tell you exactly what they mean. But I can tell you it means something. And I can tell you that we are in a different place than we were a few years ago. And when I look around the Sabbath churches in the United States, I'm not seeing the kind of soundness and I'm not seeing the kind of spiritual growth that we should see to be confident that we have more time to preach the gospel. And the Lord is telling me, Get your affairs in order. There's a rescue coming. And a lot of folks don't want to hear about that anymore. People say, oh, you don't have to tithe anymore. Remember, we saw one film that says, oh, don't warning, don't tithe. Warning, don't tithe. With this kind of unsoundness in the churches, and I'm just going to say it, there was a, a former very high official in the Bible Sabbath Association, never associated with Hungry Hearts, has, a, uh, has done at least one Facebook presentation over not tithing. Okay, this is how unsound things are getting. And there's been people who have left Hungry Hearts, not recently, who have been on Facebook arguing against tithing, and arguing against the rescue. As a matter of fact, one of these individuals said that the true church of God would run to the tribulation, not run away from the tribulation. Well, good luck with that, bud. Good luck with that, because I've read what happens in the tribulation, and uh, when it come, push comes to shove, you ain't going to be running to it, and you won't be surviving it, because if you're not willing to do the things for Yeshua Messiah right now in the good times, there's no way you're going to do them in those times. See, that's the whole point, isn't it? To be ready for the rescue means you would pass muster in the tribulation. To not be ready for the rescue means you will not pass muster in the tribulation. And that's been the dirty secret of the whole mess the whole time. If you would give your life for Sabbath, then you'll make the rescue. Amen? Because you'll do whatever's required. If, if the Lord comes and says from the word, hey, you need the morning star, hey, I'm in, I'm in, I want the morning star. So we went to uh, Sparta a few months back, and we were praying for the pastor and his wife, and it just, the, the Lord said, pray for fire. So I just mentioned it, and I asked people who wanted it to raise their hands, and all four of them that raised their hands got it. One was an older couple who was as cold as Miss Marion before it happened. <laughs> they, came, they came out of those sweaters. <laughs> I mean, they came out of those sweaters. So I'm just telling you that if you want it, you'll do whatever's required. Amen? It doesn't matter. Holy days aren't going to be a burden to you. It's going to be the excitement and joy of your life because it's where everything is going. So is what Yeshua said. Let the righteous get right. Let the players play. Let the tares frolic. The time is now. Get your affairs in order. How do you want your stuff in the rescue? Kind of poignant after my dad died and things weren't together and we had to go get stuff straight. And I kind of decided, you know what? I'm not doing this to my kids. Uh, I'm going to go through and get all my stuff together. The, the couple things that were together, easy, done. Everything else, it's, it's all held up. If you were to be rescued out of here on your way home, too late then, right? But if it's a Pentecost like we think, how do you want your stuff situated when you ain't here anymore? Get your affairs in order. Tend to the Spirit's fire. That's one of the things he asked me. How many have the morning star rising in their hearts? And he asked the question, and he says, why should I wait? How many people have the morning star rising in our hearts? Peter said that you will do well to pay attention to it as a light in a dark place. 
the morning star rising in your hearts? How many people even have the morning star, much less rising? Clean up our sins. Time starts now. Where's your belief?